video for assignment 74, math lesson 11.3. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about finding the volume of cylinders. Now, there's a formula for finding the volume of a cylinder, and you need to add this formula to the page in your notes where you have the heading volume formulas. Now, the cool thing about this is that the formula for finding the volume of a cylinder is the same as the formula for finding the volume of any prism. Volume equals area of the base times the height of the cylinder. Okay, capital V equals capital B times H. Remember that capital B stands for the area of the base. And I had told you earlier when we were working with volume of prisms that it's the same volume formula no matter what prism you're using. Well, that includes cylinders as well. The trick is all you have to do is find the area of the base and then you can multiply that by the height of the prism or in this case the height of the cylinder. Well, make sure you have this formula for cylinders written in your notes under the volume formulas page. But the tricky thing here is that you may not be familiar with how to find the area of the base of a cylinder because cylinders have what shape of base? A circle. And so in order to find the area of the base of a cylinder you need to know how to find the area of a circle. Well guess what? We also have a formula for that. Now this is an area formula so I want you to turn back even one more page and you should find the the heading should be area formulas and I want you to write down the area for or the formula for the area of a circle okay because the base of a cylinder is circular to find the area of the base of a cylinder you have to use the formula for finding the area of a circle that formula is area equals pi times the radius squared okay capital A stands for area and the R is the radius of the circle. The symbol pi right here, okay, that's a Greek, the, a Greek letter of the alphabet and pi, remember, was just what they named that big long decimal point that we usually round to 3.14 it goes on and on forever and ever, 3.14 and so on. Um, but we can just use pi. And your calculator has a pi button if it's a scientific calculator. If it's a normal calculator that does not have a pi button, you can use 3.14. Okay? Um, your answers are going to be slightly different sometimes, but when we round off usually like to the nearest hundredth place anyway, you'll, you'll get the same answers. It will be close enough. So pi is 3.14. And if you do not have a pi button on your calculator, you can just type in 3.14 times the radius squared, which remember that would mean radius times radius. Some people like to punch all of that in their calculator. They just like to punch pi times the radius times the radius. That works. Some people like to use their square button on their calculator, so they punch in pi times the radius and then hit the square button. Whichever way you do it, totally fine. Um, let's just make sure that you're capable of finding the area of a circle, okay? We haven't talked too much about circles in fifth grade, and we really don't work with circles a ton, but you should be familiar with the, the basic, you know, points of a circle. The radius of a circle is any line segment that connects from the center of the circle out to the edge, okay? Anywhere from the center out to the edge. It's halfway across the entire circle. That is called the radius. The diameter of the circle is any line segment that passes through the center of the circle 
okay, but goes all the way from one side to the other, passing through the center of the circle. Okay, so it's the full length across the circle. If you know either the radius or the diameter, you can find the other length too, okay, because the diameter is twice as long as the radius, or the radius is half as long as the diameter. So the radius times 2 will give you your diameter, or if you take your diameter and divide by 2, you can find the length of the radius, okay? And if we know the radius, there's a simple formula for finding the area of the circle, which is pi times the radius squared, or pi times radius times radius, okay? All of this information is in your student reference book if you need to refer back to it. You should go to um, pages 194, and that will help you if you're not sure about this information. Here, let's take a look at an example of finding the area of the circle. Now, try not to look at what it says to do. And yes, do have your calculator. You can use your calculator for all this stuff, which is maybe just basically punching in numbers, okay? So we look at our circle here. Let's find the area of this circle. We can see our radius is labeled three inches. So all we have to do is punch into our calculator pi times three squared or pi times three times three. Now you're gonna get something that's gonna be probably have a lot of decimal points, decimal places. Okay, so um, typically if it does not tell you what to round to, maybe round to the nearest tenth is a good spot. Sometimes it will tell you round to the hundredths place or round to the nearest hole. Okay, if it doesn't say just go to the tenths. So Try punching that in your calculator, and you should round it to the nearest tenth and get 28.3. Okay, so the area of the circle is 28.3 inches squared. Again, we're talking about area, so our unit will be squared. Now, back to volume. Remember, to find the volume, we need to find the area of the base and multiply that by the height of the prism. So if we want to find the volume of this cylinder here, our base has a radius of 5 centimeters. So the first thing we have to do with our calculator is punch in that area formula, pi times 5 times 5, or pi times 5 squared, whichever keys you like to use on your calculator. Now what you're looking at there is the area of the base. Then, to get the volume of the cylinder, we multiply that by 4, because that's the height of the cylinder. So, if you multiply that by 4, your resulting answer is the volume of the cylinder. And it comes out to be about 314 centimeters cubed. Try punching all of that in your calculator and make sure that you can end up with this correct answer. Now, Finding the volume, finding the area, it's just a matter of using the formula and plugging in the right numbers. So use your calculator and use your formulas that you have listed in your notes to help you find the volumes of all the cylinders and prisms on page 376 in your journal. Just remember to be very careful to always check what shape your base is and then you'll know to find the volume you need to find the area of that base and multiply it by the height. Good luck!